family, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing a bunch of Dollar Tree Easter DIYs. If you enjoy the video, please make sure to leave a bunny emoji in the comments below. It really helps my channel out. With that being said, let's begin. I love this DIY. You're going to get two pool noodles from Dollar Tree and one of their hula hoops. They have three different sizes of hula hoops. I went with the smallest one. You're going to cut into the pool noodles, but just on one side, and then you're going to wrap the pool noodles around your hula hoop. So you'll be able to wrap one entire pull noodle around the hula hoop and then you'll have to cut into the second one to make it fit just the little area that you have left. Then you're going to need some tape to tape the pull noodles into place so that they're not unraveling off of the hula hoop. We're going to be hanging this. To hang it, you're going to get the plant hanger from Dollar Tree and zip ties. You're just going to zip tie the plant hanger to the hula hoop. And then you're going to need a bunch of floral or, you know, the eggs. It's completely up to you here, but I got a bunch of different florals that I am going to push through my hula hoop. So the first one I got, it's more of like a hanging type of floral. And I've got different colors. Now to fill in the areas so that I wasn't using as many floral picks, I got these flower necklaces from Dollar Tree. Now you're gonna cut into them and you're going to glue where two of the flowers are to make sure everything isn't just sliding right off of the string. And then you just glue and wrap around the necklace on your hula hoop. Now that you don't have to do this, but I did this because it was cheaper to use this to fill in the gaps versus a bunch of flowers. And then I go in with the rest of my flowers. So like I said, I used the flower necklace. So I cover up a good amount of area and that way I don't have to use as many floral picks cause I would have to use a lot more had I not used the necklace. Next up, I got the Easter eggs from Dollar Tree and I'm gonna glue them to my little, it's like a floral chandelier. So first off I glue where the uh, pool noodle is and then I hang this up. To hang this up, I have a ceiling hook. They're really inexpensive, you guys. They're like a dollar and 97 cents for a two pack. That's what I hang it off of. And then I glued some Easter eggs to the hanging floral pieces. This is not the first time I made a floral chandelier. Now, when I make these, the only time I will use real flowers is if I'm using baby's breath because baby's breath, when it dries up, it still is very pretty. So I went ahead and I filled this up with baby's breath. This really is one of my favorite DIYs in this video. And like I said, I've done flower chandeliers before and I'll link some down below for you guys. I've done some really pretty ones, but this one is like high on the list of being one of my favorites. I really like the way that it looks. I will say though, if you are tall, you got to make sure you have tall ceilings because your head will probably hit it if you make the exact same one I did. For this DIY, you're going to need a laundry basket and a pool noodle. What you're going to do is bend the pool noodle and place it in the laundry basket. And then use zip ties to zip the pool noodle to the laundry basket. Now I've done this DIY in the past before and this one I'm going to share with you guys is probably my more expensive one that I've done. I'm going to be gluing dusters from Dollar Tree to my laundry basket. So I put the hot glue on the wire of the laundry basket and then placed the dusters down. So this is a little bit more expensive because I did have to use 14 of these dusters on this. I got an Easter Bunny ear headband from Dollar Tree. I cut the ears off of the headband and then I glue that to the front of the laundry basket. Then I go ahead and glue the rest of my duster pads, that's what they're called, to the pool noodle. When I say I used 14 of them total, I mean on the pool noodle and the basket, not just on the basket. Fill this up with whatever you want. I got a white fluffy blanket that I put inside of here and then the peeps pillows from Dollar Tree. You could put candy inside of there. It's so cute and easy to do. Now, if you want to make a more inexpensive version, uh, close enough to this, you can get the baby blankets from Dollar Tree. You only need two of the blankets to cover up the bottom of the laundry basket. So again, you're just putting glue where the wire of the basket is and then attaching the little baby blankets. And then for the actual pool noodle, you need two more baby blanket. So that's it. It's way cheaper to do it versus getting the dusters. So that's another option. I did the same thing to this one. I cut off some of the ears from one of the Dollar Tree Easter Bunny headbands and glue that to the front of the laundry basket. And this time around, I got some craft foam. I cut out the eyes, a nose, and a little mouth of a bunny. And I glue that to the front of this. And you can find craft foam at Dollar Tree. It's just very hard to find the exact 
exact colors you want and just to find the craft foam in general it's hard or you can use felt you might even be able to get away with construction paper these diy laundry baskets are just so much fun and they're real easy to customize to your style your budget maybe a theme that you're trying to go with and i've actually used these in the past to take pictures of cooper inside of i think he's a little too big but now i have my daughter noelle and i have them saved already so that i could take some pictures of her inside of the baskets for our next diy i got the jumbo eggs that dollar tree carries in the plus section at three dollars a piece we need to make holes on the top and bottom of our eggs to do this we're using a spade drill bit so it's basically like a sharp drill bit you can get it for five dollars now lots of times people melt dollar tree plastic using a broom handle i'll show you that in a second however when you melt plastic you release a lot more toxic fumes versus cutting into the plastic like i said you could technically melt the plastic lots of people get the broom handles from dollar tree they remove the top off of it and then put that inside of some fire to heat it up and then use that to melt any plastic from dollar tree again though this is first of all it's more dangerous second of all it releases toxic fumes so you want to do this with the windows open preferably outside with a mask on and obviously do this at your own risk now i got a planter from dollar tree we're going to be putting a piece of styrofoam inside of there you have to cut it down to fit the inside of the planter and then go ahead and glue it into the planter the top of the broom handle i put at the bottom of the broom handle so basically the part that has a spiral on it and then i push that into my styrofoam you need to make sure that the bottom of the planter is weighted fill it up with stones all the way to the top if it's too lightweight it will topple over now you can start stacking and pushing your egg pieces through the broom handle so for every broom handle i'm using four of these eggs then i take some hot glue and i glue wherever two eggs meet you can leave it at just just this or you can add ribbon to the bottom which I decided to do and create a little bow at the front and then I decided to place the planter inside of one of the bottoms of the jumbo Easter eggs because I like the way that this looked better again you don't have to do it there's so many different things that you can do that I didn't do to save money if you make this topiary with the four eggs broom handle planter three bags of stones and ribbon it'll cost you around twenty dollars it's around twenty three dollars if you do it the exact same way that i did it these can be used outside as long as your planter is weighted so it doesn't fall over with any gust of wind i love the way that these turned out and just for reference that topiary that's on my fireplace that was sixty dollars for just one for this DIY, I got these foam craft bunnies from Dollar Tree. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to slice through the foam bunny so I can have two pieces. Now you do this very carefully because if you just take a knife and try to cut straight through it, there's a good chance you might mess up the face. You just got to do it very slowly so you get an even cut. I then paint the bunnies brown to look like chocolate. I also got these gift boxes from Dollar Tree that I painted two tones of brown. These are all supposed to be chocolate pieces. I got some black and white foam board from Dollar Tree. I'm going to start off with the black foam board. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out some pieces that are all the same size. I'm able to get three pieces out of one piece of foam board. And after I have my black rectangular pieces, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my bunnies and my boxes on top of one of those pieces. Pieces. So basically what I'm doing is I'm creating a chocolate box and the black part is supposed to be where the chocolate sits. So I have to make multiple versions of the same black piece. So once I have my chocolates laid out, I go ahead and trace over them and then I take a razor and cut through those areas but i over exaggerate i go over where i traced so that my chocolate pieces can fit nicely inside of the holes that i'm creating after i have my initial piece cut out i go ahead and i use that piece as a guide for all the other holes that i have to create so basically i'm just recreating the same thing over and over again six times and once i've done that i go ahead and i glue these six pieces together creating a thick piece that my little fake chocolates can fit right inside of. Now I take a white piece of foam board and I cut out a rectangle that is the same size as my black rectangles. And this is gonna go behind them, so I just glue it directly behind the black foam board. Then I take my chocolate pieces, put them inside of the little slots, and if there's anyone that's kind of moving around, I glue it into place like the bunnies. Now I grab another piece of foam board and I use it to cut out the sides of my box as well as the top of the box. Now the top of the box, you do have to cut another rectangle so that you can see inside of the box. Now go ahead and glue these pieces of foam board to the black pieces and this is gonna start creating your box shape. 
Now I grabbed some white paint and I used it to paint some swirls on top of my chocolate. This is completely optional. I do think that the darker pieces of chocolate really needed it because they were kind of blending too much in with the black foam board. Now I found this bulletin board trim at Dollar Tree and I'm going to glue it inside of the box. I think this looks more decorative and makes it look more like a chocolate box versus just like white foam board with chocolate inside of it. Now I got some pink ribbon. I'm going to wrap it and tape it around my box. So I did it both vertically and horizontally. Finally, I glue a bow to the front of the box on top of the ribbon and that's how I made this jumbo chocolate box that is perfect for Easter. I did one for Valentine's Day and I've been on such a kick with these because I think they're just absolutely adorable. I do have some ideas up my sleeve for the holiday season but I, you know, I'm going to keep them in my my head for now because I feel like you guys are going to be really excited when you see them but look how cute this is. I ended up putting it on the wall using command strips. For this DIY, you're going to need the punch bowls and fluted bowls from Dollar Tree. Now you're going to fill up one of the punch bowls with some Easter grass and then whatever you want to put inside of there, you can put inside of there. So basically these are going to be a really cool version of an Easter basket. So I put a little plushie inside of there and then some chocolates that I got from Dollar Tree. Then you're going to take your other punch bowl, place it on top of the punch bowl that has everything inside of it and then use tape to seal it. If you use hot glue, it's not going to be something that somebody could pry open again. You're going to have to break the bowl to get anything out. So just use tape to keep it shut. Now the fluted bowls are supposed to be the head of the bunny. Before you close them together, again, fill it up with some Easter grass and some treats. And then you can seal it using your tape. And what I would do afterward is glue the head to the body. I wouldn't use tape because honestly, it's just if you move it around, then the head's going to fall right off. I would use hot glue. Now I got one of the Easter Bunny headbands from Dollar Tree. I'm going to place it around the bowl and then tape it into place. If you just put it on the bowl, it pops right off. So you do have to tape it into place. I wanted to glue a bow to the front of this. I ended up finding this bow hair clip at Dollar Tree that's so pretty. So I put a little bit of hot glue on the clip and I glue that to the bowl. Now a little bit of hot glue makes it so that it sticks to the bowl, but it's easy to peel off once you want to use the hair clip. Now I got this decorative bunny kit at Dollar Tree. So it's meant to be for a wreath. I'm going to go ahead and take the head and remove the ears off of that head. And then the rest of the body pieces, they have string on them that I also removed. And I'm going to glue this to my bowls. And I think this looks so much cuter because this DIY has been done before. And I don't think it looks as cute without these type of details on it. So I think finding the decorative kit, it makes it look so much cuter. And you could always get craft foam or felt and cut out those features and glue them to your bowls. I think it looks better this way, like I said. This is something else you can do that's super fun. You could get the deviled egg tray from Dollar Tree and fill it up with some of the Easter eggs and then put your bunny on top of that tray. I think this brings it up a notch and I think it's really cool to gift it this way. I forgot to take footage of it like that. So, I mean, you just saw the idea for a second, but I, I do like it with that tray. These are just so cute. This DIY is super easy. You can get planters from Dollar Tree. The larger one is from the plus section at $5 and the smaller one is $1.25. You're also going to need a pole noodle. For the bigger planter, all you have to do is bend the pole noodle and stick it right inside. For the smaller planter, you have to cut the pole noodle down and then fold it and stick it right inside. I'm using ribbon to cover up the pool noodle. I glue a little piece on and then I start wrapping it around. I worked in small little sections and every so often I would use glue to make sure that it was nice and secure. To cover up the larger pool noodle, I use these fabric squares from Dollar Tree and you only need two to cover up a larger pool noodle of these versus the ribbon where you need three rolls. I cut little strips, wrap them around the pool noodle and glue them into place. This is something that is completely optional, not necessary. I got this garland from Dollar Tree and I decided to glue it to the rim of the planters to make it look more Easter like. I glued a bow to the front of each planter and then I filled this up with flowers. You can always use fake flowers and you could put potted flowers inside of here or some plants. It's completely up to you. This makes such a beautiful decoration piece that you can use both inside or outside and it would also be a great gift if you're going to brunch or a dinner on Easter day.
For this project, you can get the small square mirrors from Dollar Tree and then one of their square gift boxes. Make sure it's one where the mirrors can go directly on top of the box and cover it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to glue my mirrors to the box. Back in the day, I used to use five square mirrors to create a box. This is so much easier doing it this way versus gluing all the mirrors together. In my box, I'm going to put in a vase so that I can put fresh flowers inside of the box and they'll have a constant water source. I want to add some embellishments to this. So to do that, I got these flock bunnies from Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree, foam eggs, and then bamboo skewers. I push the bamboo skewers through the bunny and through the eggs, turning them into picks. And I could just push this through the flowers and it makes it look really pretty. I grab some ribbon, wrap it around the mirrors, and then tie a little bow because I wanted to give this away as a gift. This makes such a beautiful gift and centerpiece. I made a larger mirror box. I filled that one up with flowers, but this time around, I got these peeps from Dollar Tree. They're $5. It comes with four peeps total, and each one is a smaller size than the other. And then I I got some spoons from Dollar Tree that I'm actually just going to glue to the back of each peep and then I push that inside of the flowers again just making a floral pick of sorts. Whether you make this box or not I think grabbing the peeps and using them in a floral arrangement makes it look so cute. In this part of the video, we're gonna take some time to appreciate the Dollar Tree Easter egg containers. You can make some really cool DIYs using these. The first one is a wreath. All you need is a hula hoop from Dollar Tree and the Easter eggs. Glue the eggs to the hula hoop and to each other. So wherever an Easter egg meets another Easter egg, make sure you're putting glue there to make sure this is nice and secure. It doesn't fall apart easily on you. I got some ribbon from Dollar Tree, created a giant bow, and then glue that to the front of my wreath. That's it, real easy to do. I needed six packs of eggs for this particular wreath. The eggs that I got in my pack, there were a lot of them versus the ones that only come with like six or eight. Another hack you can do with these eggs is just by getting a needle and thread. Go ahead and just feed it through the holes that are already inside of the Easter egg containers. And what you can do is make some garland. And it's so inexpensive to do this. You can make long, long garland and not even spend $20. I used needle and thread from Dollar Tree. But if you have a long needle, you don't even have to open up the eggs to string them through the thread. And then I just hung this up on my credenza. You can hang this up anywhere. I've seen people hang this up on staircases and it looks so pretty. I just don't really have a staircase to do that on. This is another easy hack you can get a glass container or vase and pour your eggs inside of the container I will link this one down below for you guys it's my favorite one from Target it's ten dollars I use it for so many different things go ahead and mix your eggs around and then fill this up with some floral the floral that I'm using I got from Dollar Tree it's these grass picks that have eggs in them and then these little orchids that I decided to mix through there of all the hacks you can do with these eggs this one is definitely my favorite it's just so pretty I threw some baby's breath in there as well and I just think it looks so nice. Now, the final thing you can do with these is you can get the traffic cones from Dollar Tree and some of their Spanish moss, as well as a plastic plate from there. I cut the bottom off of the traffic cone and then I glue that to an upside down plastic plate. Now I'm gonna glue the moss to the traffic cone, making sure that I get it in every area. That way the cone color isn't peeking through. Once I have that all down, I then just glue my eggs directly to the moss. I hold it in place as I wait for the glue to completely dry. Because because the traffic cone is on the smaller side and the eggs look a little large on it, I needed smaller eggs to fill in any areas that I felt like needed something else. So I got the egg garland from Dollar Tree. I just removed the eggs off of it and then I just glue that here and there and I think this looks much nicer. And that's how I made the egg tree using Dollar Tree products. Back in the day, it used to be so much harder to make these because they didn't sell traffic cones. So you had to figure out a way to make that cone shape. We're gonna make another quick and easy wreath. All you have to do is get a wreath from the plus section. And let me tell you, it is so much cheaper to buy it already made. It looks fuller and nicer versus making it out of Dollar Tree products. I'm also gonna be using one of the peep plushies from Dollar Tree and some zip ties. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip the peep plushie over and I'm gonna create small little cuts in there so that I could feed zip ties through the back of this. I put a zip tie at the bottom of the peep and then one going through each ear. And then I zip tie this to the wreath. So this is gonna keep it in place. If you use hot glue, it's a little too weighted that it's gonna start moving forward and taking the garland with it. So this is an easy way to attach it. It is not going like anywhere. Dollar Tree carries different peeps ribbon in the peep collection. I got two different kinds and I'm making a bow. Now I am not good at making bows, so that's why I never really share with you guys how to do it. First I just tied a bow and then I cut little small pieces and larger pieces that 
I zip tie together in the center. Literally not good at making them and not good at describing how I make them. Anyways, when I was done with it, I zip tied it to my wreath. I then pulled out that egg garland because my wreath was a little too bright for the rest of my decor that I have. So I added some of the egg garland eggs just because they're on the pastel side. I felt like this made it blend in better with the rest of my decor. That's how I made this quick and easy wreath. I do know that most of the stuff that I use for this wreath is from the plus section, but to make a peep, to make that wreath, it would cost me so much more money. The only thing where I think you could really cut corners is with the ribbon, you don't have to use the peep ribbon. This is a very easy hack. You can get a tension rod or a curtain rod and a pull noodle from Dollar Tree. You're gonna cut through the pull noodle, but not the entire thing, just on one half of it, and then wrap that around the tension rod or curtain rod, whatever it is that you're using. I actually uploaded this DIY on TikTok and Instagram before this, and people kept asking why I didn't slide the tension rod through the hole of the pool noodle the tension rod is too big to slide through there i got this garland from dollar tree and i'm going to wrap it around the pool noodle and you only need one of these to wrap it around the pool noodle i do this so that the pool noodle color doesn't really peek through everything else i'm going to stick on this now the fun part decorating this i got these eggs from dollar tree to attach them, at first I was just using glue, but then it ended up working better with some push pins. Then I got the egg containers from Dollar Tree and I glued a bunch of them to this thing that I'm making. I think I used about four packs of them. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was around four. Then I got some floral bunches from Dollar Tree. I removed them off of the stem. And before I push them through my pool noodles, I go ahead and I hang the tension rod. Now, usually the tension rod, you can just push it through somewhere. I don't know how to explain it but you like twist it and push it my tension rod was too big for the area so i had to hang it off of some command strips i got some egg garland from dollar tree that i decided to hang off of this as well and to hang it i used glue and push pins i had to use both of them to make sure that they stayed put i used five total now i did get comments about this of being tacky and remember you don't have to use exactly what i used if you don't want to use flowers that look fake you can go somewhere else and get more realistic looking flowers Hours. It's just an idea and then you can just build off of this idea. Moving along to our next project, you're going to need the wooden crates from Dollar Tree. Go ahead and paint them whatever color you like. Now I'm going to be having two rows and to elevate the second row, I'm actually just going to use one crate. Where I'm just using one crate where the two meet to cut down on cost. I got this wooden chalkboard tag from Dollar Tree that I'm going to glue to the front of this and then I wrote Peep Farm on it. Now this portion of the DIY I actually did last year, but we're gonna elevate this a little bit more. So I ended up gluing two crates side by side and painting them a little bit of a darker pink color and I did this two times. So I'm gonna take one row of two crates and I'm gonna use wood glue to glue that on top of the crate box that I originally made. And then once I have that glued down, I then take my second row and I glue that directly on the first row. So now I have these crates that are lying flat the way they're supposed to be and then on their side. I'm gonna be filling up my crates with some Easter treats that I got all at Dollar Tree except for the big bunnies I'm placing inside of this. Now, if you paint the inside of your crates, and they're not sealed so that they're food safe. You don't really wanna put the treats directly into the crate and you wanna keep them in the original packaging or wrap them in some type of plastic or a Ziploc bag. For video purposes, I take the treats out because I don't like the glare from the packaging and I wanna give you guys an idea of how this looks. However, like I said, especially if you're giving this to somebody, don't take the treats directly out of the packaging. I found this hippity hoppity Easter sign at Dollar Tree. I removed the carrot from it and then I glued that to the top of my crates. I got a DIY wood Easter chick from Dollar Tree as well. I ended up painting it off camera and I'm gluing that to the top of my little piece. And that's how I made this little treat center. I think it's so cute. It's a great gift idea versus just doing a Easter basket. And like I said, you do want to keep the food sealed versus the way I have it, unless you don't plan on eating the food. I recently bought these fake cakes at Home Goods, and I thought to myself, I have to recreate these. They're hard to find, and I know you guys would love to make some for yourself. Now you can get some Model Magic from Dollar Tree. It's one ounce, or you can go somewhere else and get the air dry clay from Crayola and get more bang for your buck versus buying the little Model Magic pieces from Dollar Tree. Now what you're gonna do is you are just going to mold eggs out of your clay or Model Magic. It's easy to do, just roll it around and then 
to shape the top. I didn't use any fancy tools to do this. I made large eggs and then small eggs. Then I took some more model magic. I rolled it out, so I just flattened it out. You can use your palm to do this, but if you have a rolling pin, it just makes it easier. And then I used a little X-Acto knife to cut out a bow shape from this. And I did this two times. I did one more of a larger bow and then a small bow. Finally, the last thing I molded was a cupcake liner. I just got the shape down and then I used a little something to make lines through it to make it look more like a cupcake liner. You need to wait for your model magic or clay to harden before you can move on to the next step which is painting them. So I let this sit overnight and then I went and I painted it more pastel colors. So I went with like pink, a mint color, yellow, a light blue color, but you can do whatever you want. Now get some cylinder gift boxes from Dollar Tree. Get at least two in two different sizes. You're also going to need some craft foam. I got my craft foam at Hobby Lobby for 99 cents. If you get the glitter kind, it's $1.49. You're better off going to a craft store to buy your craft foam versus Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree does carry craft foam, but it comes in a very small size and you never get the colors that you want. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take your boxes and you are going to trace the circumference of the box onto the craft foam as well as the bottom of the box and then you're gonna cut those pieces out. You're gonna do this for every single box that you got. After you've cut out your craft foam, you're gonna glue it to the boxes. Now the craft foam that I had, I wanted it to be a little bit lighter and I couldn't find anything lighter at Hobby Lobby. So what I ended up doing is I just ended up painting over the craft foam to get the color that I wanted for both the blue and the pink craft foam. You're gonna have to glue your whitest gift box directly to a plate. So I got a plastic plate from Dollar Tree and I'm gluing my whitest gift box to that plastic plate. Now you're gonna need some lightweight spackle. Dollar Tree does carry lightweight spackle, but I'm using this one that I got from the hardware store because I do so many fake treats on this channel. I get more bang for my buck going to the hardware store and I don't have to mix any water inside of this to get the perfect consistency. You're also gonna need some icing tips. I got these ones for $1.49 at Hobby Lobby. You can get the pl um, more plastic kind from Dollar Tree. However, you can't reuse them. So if you're into making fake sweets, honestly, it's better to go elsewhere for some of these supplies. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your spackle inside of a piping bag with the icing tip of your choice. You're going to treat your spackle as if it were actual like icing or frosting. You are just decorating it as if it were a real cake. So I was just using different types of tips, a thicker one and then like a thinner one. On top of my smaller gift box, I glued down that little cupcake liner that I made. Then I put some spackle on top of the cupcake liner to look like frosty. And then inside of that, I placed the little eggs that I made, but I did have to use some hot glue to attach all four of them together. I glued the little bow that I made to the front of the cupcake liner, and then I went in with some more spackle. I was using the spackle to cover up where two pieces of craft foam met just so I could get a more seamless look and I ended up making a design that's a little bit different from the home goods one I just did more spackle designs on this because I knew it wasn't going to look exactly like the home goods one so I just wanted to do my own thing the bigger bow I made I glued to the wider box um, and then I just again did some spackle designs that were similar to the home goods one once I had most of my spackle designed down, I then added the eggs and I did use a little bit of hot glue to attach the eggs where they hit the craft foam directly to make sure that they didn't go anywhere. Once they harden inside of the spackle, they don't really move, but while you're waiting for it to dry, it's best to just use a little bit of hot glue so it doesn't move anywhere. Again, I just tried to kind of mimic what the home goods cake is, but also did my own little thing. After I glued down the eggs, I did some more little speckle designs, but that's how I made this cake using the Dollar Tree gift boxes. And if you're into making fake sweets, I do recommend going for most of your products elsewhere. The gift boxes I love to use from Dollar Tree, they're cheapest there, and there's other things you can use to get the main form down. However, like craft foam, spackle, clay, it's all cheaper to get it elsewhere and in bulk, especially if you like to make fake sweets like me. I ended up making two of these. The second one I'm going to have on my TikTok, so make sure you check it out, bargain.bethany. And on there, this one was just done slightly different. It's no paint involved. We're going to make some Easter cake 
candles. Pick up some pillar candles from Dollar Tree, whatever colors you like. The first candle I'm melting is a white candle and I do this inside of the oven. I preheat my oven to 300 degrees and I melt the wax for about 25 minutes. Once it's melted, I poured my white wax inside of a pitcher. This is a candle wax pitcher that I got at Hobby Lobby for four dollars and 99 cents then i got this ice cube tray from dollar tree and i am going to pour the wax inside of the ice cube tray you can pour it directly out of the little glass that it, the wax comes in from dollar tree however you don't get real good control that way so i prefer to just have a pitcher on hand you're gonna wait for your wax to harden once it has hardened all you have to do is flip the ice cube tray over and push the wax out and it comes out so easily so I have these little pieces that I'm going to use for the other candles that I'm making at Dollar Tree pick up some glasses glass dishes that you can use for your candles make sure they say nothing about not taking heat to it because some of the glasses will say that they aren't heat resistant I'm using this glass pie dish and then this glass mug I got from Dollar Tree I glued new wicks to the bottom of them I used two in the pie one and then one in the mug one now I'm going to start with the pie one I poured some orange candle wax inside of my pitcher and I am then going to pour that inside of my little pie bowl and then I have to wait for this to completely harden if you've seen me make candles on this channel you know this technique however if you're new you can make whipped wax that looks like fake whipped cream so what you do is you're gonna take your wax and pour it inside of a heat resistant mixing bowl one that you don't use for actual food you're gonna wait for your wax to start developing a film on the top so it's starting to harden in the meantime get your piping bag and icing tip ready because once you put the wax inside of there it's gonna move fast and it starts hardening quickly so you can see here I have that little film on top so now I can start mixing if you're mixing and it's not getting thicker you just wait for the wax to cool down a little bit more and then continue mixing because you're looking for it to look like thick mashed potatoes now scoop your wax inside of the piping bag and start piping out the wax and once you start squeezing do not stop because if you stop the wax hardens pretty much immediately inside of the icing tip and then you have to start over you have to get a new icing tip so once you start squeezing just keep going so I did a little whipped cream type of look around my little pie then I got these wax melts from Dollar Tree I'm using a potato peeler to just grate it down and then I'm gonna sprinkle that on top of the wax again I'm using one that I don't actually use for food I topped my pie off with one of the little bunny wax pieces that I made. And then for the other candle I made, I poured in some orange wax. You want to wait for the first layer of wax to completely dry. However, I didn't wait for mine to completely dry because the sun started to go away. So I had to hurry up and finish the video. So instead, I started to pour in the green wax and the green wax and orange wax kind of mixed in with each other. I used just one green pillar candle with the leftover green wax that I had I did mix it together to get a whipped look and then I used my piping bag and icing tip to create that little whipped cream look on top of my mug you can see here what I meant by the green and the orange wax they mixed in with each other I ended up covering it up with the green wax anyway then inside of this I placed some of those wax bunnies that I made so they kind of look like marshmallows inside of this one you're gonna trim your wick between 1 8 of an inch to 3 16 of an inch you don't want it to be too long it can catch you know a fire or it can make an uneven melt so you want to keep it around that type of length make sure you're always nearby when you light your candles I would do more research when candle making I'm not an expert and I haven't shared everything with you guys so I definitely would do more research and if anything you can always use these as just a decorative piece and not anything that you light up for this project you're gonna need foam board I got this yellow foam board from Hobby Lobby just because I didn't want to have to paint all of my foam board however Dollar Tree carries foam board and they carry yellow poster board that you can use I printed out a peep template and I'm going to be tracing this on top of the foam board I'll link the template down below for you guys the one I got just right off of Google and what I'm doing is I'm just tracing this image directly on top of the foam board you do not need to open up a pen to do this you just need to use something that's going to smush the paper into the foam board and you'll see the outline once you remove the paper and then after you've done that you can go ahead and use a box cutter a razor exacto knife whatever you have on hand to cut through the foam board I don't recommend using scissors though because if you use scissors it starts to smush the foam board so I'm cutting out these peep 
pieces that I'm going to use in this project. Now I'm going to have to cut pieces out of the foam board for the front, back, sides, top and bottom of my box. So for the front and the back, I didn't mess with the width of the foam board. I kept the 20 inches the same, but the height I trimmed down to nine inches and that's for the front and the back. The side pieces are three inches in width and nine inches in height. Then the top pieces are three inches in height and then 20 inches in width. Now I'm gonna use my box cutter to cut out a rectangle shape on the front of my box so that there's a hole there so you can see the peep bunnies that are inside and I only have two peep bunnies that are showing even though I glued four peep bunnies inside of this before I glue the bunnies down I did cut a bunch of small little pieces of foam board that I glued on top of each other so that I could create some distance between the bunnies and the back of the foam board I didn't want to glue the bunnies directly to the back otherwise they would be too far from the front of the box so after I've done that I start to glue the box together so you know I just glue the front the sides now I didn't really think about this though the sides of the foam board is white so I did have to end up painting that with some yellow paint uh, however I just didn't have to paint all of the foam board which that was the win to me and why I decided to use yellow foam board from the get-go now I printed out the peeps logo I'll link it down below for you guys and I was gonna cut this piece out and glue it to the front of my box however it's a little too small so I ended up eventually getting a bigger one now I took a sharpie and I just drew on the eyes and nose of the peeps they're just circles the final thing I decided to do and you don't have to do this it's not necessary I decided to take some Mod Podge put a layer of that on top of the bunnies and then sprinkle on some fake sugar the sugar I'll link down below for you guys it's like it's called fake sugar sprinkles so it's not real sugar you're not going to get mice inside of your house because of it uh, i just put it on top to get that more sugary peep look that's how i made these peeps they are so cute i really wanted to include this in this video so that's why the lighting's getting a little bit dark it was so last minute and so i don't know i just love the way that this turned out and you guys know me i love fake sweets if you plan on doing an Easter tree, so basically left up your Christmas tree for Easter, you can turn those stackable peeps into ornaments and double your amount just by painting eyes on the back of the peeps. So you get the front and you get the back. Just paint eyes and a nose on those just by using a little paint sponge that is in the shape of a circle dip it into paint and then you know go ahead and start stamping away then flip the peeps over and you're just gonna glue some rope or twine whatever you have on hand to the back of the ears and I'm just using the twine that was left over from all the egg garland that I ended up using in some of these DIYs once the glue dries you can then hang your ornament off of the tree now my tree everything inside of it is from Dollar Tree minus the ball ornaments so every single egg you see in that tree including the larger cutout eggs are from Dollar Dollar Tree, the egg garland, all of the carrots, it's all Dollar Tree. And it, what's really nice of it is they actually carry um, egg ornaments this year, larger ones and smaller ones, even the ribbon, that's Dollar Tree. Everything, like I said, is Dollar Tree and it looks so pretty. I love the way my tree turned out this year. This is probably my favorite Easter tree I've ever done. So that's it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye.